<笑>あーめー<笑> Hey everybody Hello Welcome All of the mystic sages、um, Beautiful tarot tribe Out there all over the world Intuitives Shamans Hello Thank you for stopping by my new channel And welcome This is the fourth video that I'm going to be doing on the Al Goliath Tarot deck.、Um, and we're taking a bit of a deep sea kind of dive into all things esoterica.、Uh, it's, a, it's kind of a personalized channel where we get to talk with me, myself. I'm Goliath. I'm the artist, author, and creator of the、uh, recently published Al Goliath Tarot deck. And it's kind of a safe place where we can talk about all things witchy, all things occult. All things mystical and get really, really fucking meta. So, yeah,、um, a bit of a brief catch up if you guys haven't seen.、Uh, we have already covered the Devil card part one, it could be continued. We have covered,、uh, tongue tied, <laughs> we've also covered the Death card, which we got into, a bit of a dive into that. And last time I was with you guys, we got into the Empress card, the beautiful Empress card. So, yeah, if you've picked up a deck, a copy of the deck, and you've got it out there, you can kind of learn along all of the cards because we are going to go through all of them, starting with the,、um, the majors first. So, you can kind of tune in if you want, or you can just kind of hang out and listen. You might learn something new, or, you know, whatever, that's cool too. Thanks for tuning in. And that's part of the beauty of doing a video recording is that you can go back and re watch it anytime, and it's kind of out there in Cyber World. So you can pause it, go get a cup of tea, and, and that's kind of what it is. So, as you can see, I have my big, big cup of tea,、um, just the old green tea. It just kind of gives me a bit of a wake up call, and I'm trying to stay off the coffee and、um, you know, live more, you know, not flooding my adrenaline. You know, my body with adrenaline and heat kind of thing. So, I'm trying to get into more of a healthy way of living. But let's give a quick altar tour. So, Amen.、Uh, <laughs> uh, as you can see, today we have arrived at the Hierophant card.、Uh, this, um, this is the Hierophant card that I illustrated、um, from the Al Goliath Tarot deck. And this is the card that we're going to be looking at today and talking about. And、um, I decided to go to do, bleh, tongue tied again, to do the altar space today with something kind of a little bit more stripped back, a little bit more minimal. And you know, it kind of matches the aesthetic. These are some,、um, just some feathers that I got from Spotlight. They're actually really beautiful. They're dark green, kind of like a dark angel or like a, a I don't know, like maybe there are Archangel. I think it's like Archangel Raphael had the green feathers, the dark green feathers. I'm not sure. I'm not a religious person, but that's weird that I would say that because today we're going to be talking about, you know, this is a religious card. We have a bit of the amethyst. We've got all these little keys, these cute little keys with different k i n d of、um, denominations, which kind of are a reference to, you know, the keys that we're going to find and talk about in the tarot card. Uh, we've got an Onyx ball. You guys all know that I am a massive Onyx fan. Like, that's like my jam.、Uh, yeah, $2 shot, bit of spray paint, and、um, here we are. So, yeah, so first of all, these, these chats are kind of、um, a bit of like an exploration into the artwork and the creation. So, this is the Al Goliath Tarot deck.、Um, for those of you out there that ask me, I actually did create this box. Um, and it took me a long time as well. To, this deck, by the way, took four years to draw and create because they're all drawn in A3 size. And yeah, it was a bit of a process in my life. But the, re the real reason why we're doing these videos is because the guidebook was an, <laughs> Oops. The guidebook was an 80,000 word guidebook. And so it was a lot of information to condense into a, into a Box, so, you guys would get it included. And if I didn't include this, it would go into a separate book, which would be really thick, and that would be like retail price way higher. So, I just wanted to give you, oh, and by the way, that's me. That's me. I'm Goliath. <laughs> so, I wanted to give you guys as much as, as, you could, as I possibly could, so you guys could, you know, get a bit of meat on the bone. And, you know, reading the book is that,、um, you know, it's like a tour guide. I, I don't read the whole thing, I just kind of go into the key points. and So, yeah,、um, the Devil card was、uh, at part one was a big epic video. I'm still getting messages about that one. So, if you haven't gone to see Devil part one, you can check it out on this channel.、Uh, 
Um, but yeah, anyway, today, this card, I'm not gonna lie, guys, this card is going to be a little bit heavy. It could get a little bit controversial. So um, it's not my intention to upset anybody or you know make anyone feel uncomfortable. That's not what we're doing here. It's just about talking about um, art and talking about expression and talking about the tarot because that's my passion. So it's not, but that, that being said, um, I kind of think you guys, if you're, if you're tuning into this channel, that you kind of already have a pretty, you know, decent grip or basic understanding of, of the tarot, I think. Um, so we know that this is, you know, the, the Hierophant, the, the Pope card. And that was actually what this card was called when it, you know, was first created. It was known as the Pope. And then later on in the 18th century, they started changing it. And I think it was the Marcel around that period, it got changed into the Hierophant the Hierophant. And um, yeah, so it's kind of interesting. We'll get into all of it. Um, and yeah, just with the um, the word Hierophant, it actually comes from the two words, which means Hieros, meaning sacred, and Phanos, Phanon, which means to reveal or show. So it's about revealing or showing of mysteries. So I think what we'll do, what we always do, we go old school and we're going to start off with the traditional Hierophant card, which is the one that most people know. Yeah, we're going right back and it, this is actually a mini deck, so it fits really, really well in my hands. <laughs> um, I hope that you like it. Uh, I love this card. I, I love all the cards, but I, I won't lie. I have a very complicated relationship with the Hierophant and I think a lot of mystics out there do. It's really one of those cards where it's like, we love and respond to the constructs of it or we just just don't like it at all. And we're going to kind of look at it from both points of view because this is, you know, it's tarot talk and it's real, like it's real. And by the way, guys, I don't like fuck around with this stuff. I love tarot. It's my passion. I like it real and I like it raw. That's how I do life. It's how I do everything. So, you know, let's just kind of talk about it. Having a sip of the tea. Um, so in my card, we called this card the um, the Master of Keys. So we can see all the keys there. It is the Master of Keys, and and let's just get into it. So, ha, ah, big deep breath. Where even where would one even begin to start with this? So, first of all, we can see that we have this kind of um, religious structure here. We've got a figure of um, a male energy, or it could be. It doesn't have to be male. It could be a teacher. It's a person that is of authority. It's a person that is of, um, you know, it's looking down upon people. We see it's like uh, people are lower. We've got two individuals that are smaller and one's higher. So this is about levels. It's about structure. And in the traditional tarot, we see that quite clearly where we've got the red robes and red means what? Power. Red is a powerful energy sign. I was actually watching a bit of Buffy the Vampire Slayer the other day. I'm a bit of a nerd. <laughs> I'm into some weird shows. You know, you guys probably are too. And I remember that Glory, the, the character Glory always had red on um, because it's a signification of power. It's a signification of um, look at me, I'm in control. And so, yeah, so we've got this, we've got the uh, two fingers up, two fingers, you know, two fingers up, two fingers down here. Um, we've got a 3.3 tiered crown. So it is about levels of evolution. It's about knowledge. It is about kind of wisdom. And we've got these pillars. And now these pillars are actually a cross reference to the counterpart of the Hierophant, which is the High Priestess energy, which we've also got the pillars here as well. But with the High Priestess, she's about veils you know, you can pass through her as knowledge is passing through her. She's in association with the maiden energy that we looked at before in the Empress card. Um, and then she's got the veil. And then in the Hierophant, he's actually got these kind of concrete gray pillars, which is kind of like blocking energy. So it's about like, you must come through me before you can get to, you know, you must come through me. So he is the gatekeeper of knowledge. He's the gatekeeper of sacred information. He is the energy of structure and authority. And it's like someone that is like, I'm here and you need to come through me to get to what you what what knowledge you seek. And so this this doesn't always mean religion, but for this part we're going to look at that anyway because you know, we kind of have to at some point. 
Um, yeah, so we can see that. And I think the color gray is probably like a really perfect color for the Hierophant um, because it is about, you know, it's not, it's, it's a bit more rigid and it's a bit more kind of gray to me in color scheme of things is kind of like, it's a bit drab, not drab, but I mean, it's not vibrant. It's like, it's, it's routine, it's structure, it's like concrete. It can get a bit repetitive. Um, and I've got a very strong rising um, Sagittarius in me and Sagittarian energy is kind of like the opposite of what uh, Taurus would be, which is Sagittarian is about expansion and breaking the rules and going out into uncharted territories. It's also got the teacher energy, but the Hierophant is about like showing up every day, mentoring somebody, and it's about a traditional kind of higher learning. And so, yeah. Uh, it's about, yeah, it's about advice. It could be like, you know, things that are passed on from generation to generation. It's about, you know, keeping things traditional. It's like we've always done it this way and that's how we're always going to do it. So it could be a teacher. It could be a person in the community. It could be a person that, you know, a professor. It's about university. It's about seeking of knowledge. It's that you want to go higher. You want to learn more. Um, and it's about knowledge. Like, I guess it's kind of like in reference to me, I guess it's like to acquire a level of knowledge. It's something that you had to build upon over a period of time. And, um, you know, and when it comes to like mysticism or, you know, tarot or anything, you know, we talked about that in the intro video, as we do, as we keep, you know, evolving and expanding, we should be getting stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger with every year, with every reading that goes on. And so, I'm going to, yeah, I think we're going to have a look. Oh, by the way, we'll have a quick look at this. So, yeah, we've got the pillars. We've got the blocking. He's seeking knowledge. He's got the staff of authority. He's very much Pope energy. We've got these two younger energies below that are kind of kneeling, like paying homage or kind of listening, um, observing him and, and you know, taking in the information. And we've also got these two keys here at the bottom as well. And you can see that they're crossed over. So it's like it's a crossing of knowledge. So this isn't a reference to knowledge coming in and it's a reference to knowledge going out. It's like I just made this satanic. Like, <laughs> um, I'm not satanic, by the way. Uh, yeah, so it's like, maybe I am. <laughs> I'm just fucking with, yeah. Anyway, so we've got the roses here. Um, roses, obviously, is passion and love. And this card in a reading, if it shows up with the lover's card, this could you know, indicate that there is a, a sanctimonity of union or of marriage, because marriage was a church construct that was developed. And then we've got the lilies, which is about purity. So it's about purity um, coming into seeking of knowledge. So yeah, that's a little bit about the traditional Hierophant card. Um, and there you go. So ah, another sip of tea. Um, yeah, by the way, it's really nice to connect with you guys. Oh, and by, I'm wearing a blood ring. I'm wearing my blood ring. This is actually the bloodstone that I always, I've been wearing this like really a lot lately. Uh, and this one is also, yeah, the traditional uh, obsidian, which is that beautiful volcanic glass. I'm really big on gemstones and crystals and stuff. And, you know, I'm a witch. I fucking love this shit. So the ruling planet for the Hierophant energy is Taurus. And Taurus is, you know, also in conjunction to Venus. Um, so it's about structure. It's about dependability. And I've kind of got a theory when it comes to Capricorn, which is Saturn and Taurus. It's like Taurian people, they can't get a break. A lot of them like they their soul came in to experience the incarnation of Taurus. But it also had to go through a lot of like problems, trials and tribulations, which I know Capricorn people definitely get a tough gig in this life. Like anything that could go wrong probably will with Capricorn because that's part of their punishment. Um, I don't know why I've noticed that. Also Aries um, is connected to this card for me and a, there's three cards really. I mean, so there's Taurus obviously, which is the correlating card of, of the Hierophant. Then there's Sagittarian, which is about expansion and learning and it's in Jupiter and it's all about expansion in all things in all ways. It doesn't like to be contained, which is the opposite of Taurus because we know that you can have, you know, opposite signs we can manifest traits in our zodiac, in our astrological makeup that are opposite to us. And then we've got Aries, which Aries is like the leader and Aries likes to impart wisdom. They like to be in control. And I'm going to say it, guys, uh, like Aries actually does have a sadomasochistic theme in its life. Aries being the baby, 
you know, it's the the baby of the zodiac, and they they've got a thirst for knowledge, a thirst for energy. They've got a thirst for wanting to um, absorb things and go out and get shit done. And it sits very much in the hukma energy in the Kabbalah that we looked at, which was the opposite to the bena the benar energy, which was the feminine. So there's nothing wrong. Like all the signs are beautiful. I love all the signs. And you guys, if you haven't already figured it out, I am a Scorpio. <laughs> That's probably why I'm into all this, you know, into all this stuff. Why not? So yeah, uh, so types of gemstones that I'd like to work with with the Hierophant card would be the Hematite. Yeah, I love the Opal. Um, Onyx. Uh, it could be, yeah, Obsidian. I think, like, for me, probably also the Amethyst as well. Amethyst is a really good one as well. Um, you know, Amethyst is just like, it's just like such a, it, it goes with so many different things. So it said that in, you know, in life, he who masters knowledge and patience masters everything else. And I think that's like really, really interesting because we looked at in the Empress energy is that, um, you know, the mother energy, I'm just going to light a little bit of incense, a bit of sage incense just before I, cause I'm going to start channeling now. I don't actually have a script and there's no editing of these videos, guys. I just talk and see what comes through. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so yeah, in the Empress card, we know that the more time and energy and love and care that we put into something, you know, the better the result is it's going to be. And that kind of goes without saying, like, I mean, you know, when we rush things, they just don't, we just don't get the same result. So this is kind of like an energy that would acquire a bit of time. It would acquire a bit of like mastery. And so it's not something that I would pull up in a reading generally, if it's like someone that just is like coming into this life and doesn't really know much yet, like in this incarnation yet. The Hierophant for me is more like an energy that kind of sits in a little bit of a, of a more of a mature kind of maybe even a little bit darker place as well, because this card does have a lot of dark connotations to it. And we're going to get into that in a minute. So, you know, I think when we look at the Hierophant, we've got to ask like, what kind of energy is this evoking? Does it feel sinister? Does it feel scary? Um, pay attention to you know how you feel about it. So, you know, what what is it about? And that's the thing that I, you know, guys, like the reason why, like with the guidebook um, that I wrote, I just want to say, um, and I think I say this in, in the front of the book as well, you don't need my interpretations of the cards. You need yours. Yeah, you need yours. Um, you can acquire a certain level of knowledge which you can get through time and that's fine but i think you kind of have to go with what you feel you know and so that's it's the same as the devil card it's like what if it doesn't feel right it probably isn't right so listen to listen to that yeah and so you know there is a level of effort involved in learning about new stuff there's a bit of effort involved about learning and expanding your mind and growing and evolving and you know and so pay attention to your, your inner thoughts because and your feelings, because the feelings and emotions are key indicators to what the fuck is going on with you. So, yeah, I think that kind of, um, yeah, so I'm going to go into some of the key words. I think we'll jump into some of the key words. So, obviously, religion, it's about tradition. And there's, you know, there's good tradition and there's bad tradition. As society is expanding and we're all growing and changing and the world that we're in is changing, the rules uh, around things has to change and expand too to accommodate the changes that are happening, you know, in society, like the rules that they had, you know, back in the day, just they're not going to apply in this in this time period. And that's why we have to create new rules. And so back in the day, guys, the church controlled the government and the government controlled the people. And in some places in, around the world, that's still the case in, you know, in heavily in, you know, that's that whole consequential thing. If you don't if you don't behave a certain way, then you will, you know, you're going to be punished. It's that fear thing that we saw in the devil card. There's consequences for not following the structure of something. And yeah, that that's kind of like a little bit of a, you know, it's a bit darker. We'll get into that later. So yeah, how we perceive things is changing because we're growing and are changing too. And so in, in like law, which, uh, you know, this card is also connected to the justice card, if it came up in a reading as well, because it's about structure of law. So it's also like law usually came from government. So, you know, even to this day, a lot of our regulations, um, a lot of bureaucracy and things like that, they're all interconnected to religion. They're all, they all came from that religion thing. So for me, uh, in the tarot, there's cards like the death card, the tower card, the hierophant card, 
um, the Justice card, and probably really above all, the Judgment card, which I'm looking forward to doing as well. These cards are, for me, the heavy hitters for me. Um, obviously, in a reading, when we have a reading and there's a, you know, a spread, depending on what kind of spread it is for, um, you know, it, obviously, you're going to have the cards, you know what they mean, but it is up to you within you to find the narrative of, of the reading. You know, you've got to find the story and how it interconnects with you or, or, or for whatever purpose, whether it's a general reading, a love reading, health, finance, whatever type of reading it is that you're doing. Um, you know, the power of the tarot is within your um, knowledge. Yeah. So I don't think we ever stop learning. And I think it's like we always just keep growing and expanding and moving and contracting and and that's how it is. And also with um, with the tarot is that we all see things differently. Like if I came into, if I got like five different people to come into a room and read the same chapter from a book or read a few pages or verse from a book, um, they would all sound differently because everyone brings their own different unique stories and they bring their own perspective and things um, and their own unique viewing point. And so tarot is also no different to that. So um, yeah, and so that's kind of how, you know, it, there is no right or wrong. And in in uh, in different decks, some people respond better to, you know, mermaids, fairy decks, magical beings, um, you know, and, and that's cool. Like, whatever works for you, there's no right or wrong. I've got a lot of different decks with different things that I use for different people. Uh, so, yeah. Anyway, but we'll get back to the Hierophant, um, which is about, you know, it's conventional ways of obeying. It's a level of obey. And so I think that's the thing that a lot of people have trouble with, which it's like it's taking it's not about taking the author, the unorthodox approach in most cases. It's like it, it's about, you know, it's a it's a train of thought or a process that was kind of put into your mindset that was there by someone else. So someone else's point of view came into you and that was kind of like telling you how to look at things through their eyes, which is what we looked at in the devil card. Um, I'll just give me one sec. We looked at that in the devil card. So the devil being, um, you know, the devil being the master of lies, the devil being the master of control. You know, for me, sometimes when I get, depending on the reading, when I get the devil card, if I got the devil card in a reading with the Hierophant, uh, I'm just going to say it like, fuck guys, like this could get really ugly really quick um, because I kind of like I am more of a darker kind of um, energetic person with my spiritual practice. Like I actually will go out on a limb and look, I am a, I am a dark worker. I generally live in the shadow energy, not in the like anger, hatred stuff, but I like to really encompass the totality of everything like light, shade, dark, contrast. And that's why the cards are in black and white, because there's no color. It makes you focus on makes you focus on the artwork. It makes you focus on the drama of the story. It's about drama and I fucking love drama. Maybe it's like the Leo flair in me. I've got a bit of Leo in me. <laughs> but yeah, so it's like, um, yeah, so that's why the cards are black and white. They're monochrome. But if I saw, like, depending on, you know, whether it's in reverse, which we'll look at in a minute, um, if I saw the devil and the hierophant, this could indicate total mind control. This could indicate an energetic, uh, you know, we're controlling someone's thoughts, we're controlling their mind. And it's said to control someone's mind is to control their whole life. And so when it comes into the hierophant card, it is really about that level of, um, you know, I want you to see things through my point of view. That way, you know, you get what I thought is embedded in you. And then you'll see the world through my psyche or through my lens because we all have different lenses and we have information. The way that information is interpreted and given to us is also uh, going to come through different lenses as well. So when it comes to ego, uh, this can get tricky with the Hierophant energy. So you might this isn't like, guys, this doesn't just mean a spiritual teacher like a rabbi or, you know, a priest or, you know, a this could be like a yoga teacher. It could be, you know, anyone that's in a, le a level of, of giving energy through learning. Um, when there's ego involved, uh, ego kind of like flares up because we know that ego is about control. It's about being competitive. It's about, you know, if someone comes in with a different viewpoint to their viewpoint, they feel threatened by that. So they go into anger and anger is, you know, that we talked like we looked at this before is that anger is a cover emotion. You guys realize that. So anger is not anger is a byproduct of feeling powerless. So if I feel powerless, I need to go into action and then I go into anger and anger gets shit done. Anger really can, you know, people get killed through anger and fits of rage. And so it's about seeing someone else that doesn't share the same viewpoint um, or makes them feel, un, you know, makes them feel insignificant. So they use their 
projection to overthrow the other person through their anger because they feel so out of control. They've got to make you see the way things that they see things, like browbeating you and arguing with you until you see their point of view. It's not really about their point of view as such most of the time. It's about them needing to get integration that they never got met and they're trying to get that met integration. So it can be really horrible when someone is perceiving it, you know, perceiving your way of thinking as a threat and they go into defense mode and they try and, you know, try and it can get quite, they try and shut you down or they try and destroy you in any possible way that they can. And sometimes the, you know, that can happen with the Hierophant energy as well. And so, yeah, um, the energy of the card, it sometimes can be like a lack of open-mindedness. It could be a lack of innovation. It could be like, um, you know, we've got to always take this approach because that's how it is. And it's not ever getting reviewed. It's like this happens a lot in businesses as well or any type of groups is that they aren't really bringing in new ways or ideas of how to do stuff. So it's always like the same thing. And it can actually get quite enslaving for a lot of people and it can be quite dark and oppressive. So there is definitely that, um, you know, that way of looking at it. Um, but yeah, this isn't something that's really, I see really kind of talked about, but yeah, for the construct of any religion, I mean, whether it's, you know, through, you know, any type of God or whatever, it's like if the other, you know, a lot of gods like the Abrahamic gods or, you know, any type of God, God energy in general, I mean, it is the cause of most wars it is the core of most problems in in our world you know let's it, let's get real it really really is and so it's it's a lot of these gods um they are vengeful gods they don't want you to see they like they it's very sitting in the masculine energy of the hukma which was in the empress and em, sorry emperor energy which was about control it's about masculine domination so it's a, it's about oppression i had to push someone down so i could go up to become the new leader and so it seeks to, you know, keep you in its own way of thinking. So it's like, you know, nope, you're not allowed to see any other gods. You're not allowed to look at any other pantheon. You've got to focus on these gods and worship this prophet. And if you don't, you'll be punished. And so I just, I don't really believe in punishment or shaming someone or holding something over someone. Um, because we can find that in a lot of religious constructs. And, you know, that is definitely in the priest energy. And like, I don't really, I'm not going to get too caught up in like, you know, Pope energy as such, because I mean, I don't need to even say it. I mean, we know that, you know, in a lot of religious constructs, there's a lot of fucked up stuff going on, just like in a cult. Um, generally, they're run by some kind of figure of authority, someone that places themselves over other people. And it's like, they and they've got all these little minions that are like listening to them and feeding them and you know running after them and i'm gonna say it guys i'm calling it right now just let me light this sage and have a sip of tea before i say this and you know what i i know this might sound a little bit upsetting but i don't really give a fuck because we need to we need to look at it and we need to talk about it and this is real tarot and tea like i'm sitting here getting real with you because i said that's how i am and that's just how i like it you know to be is that in the spiritual community and in the tarot community as well, yeah, mm -hmm, there are a lot of psychopaths, okay? I know a few of them. Oh, I don't know them personally, but I can look at them and go, oh, holy mother of fuck, this behavior is absolutely incredibly narcissistic, it's, it's incredibly manipulative, and it's oppressive. And they, and you know, spiritual, spirituality is the perfect place for a psychopath to hide. It is the perfect place because a lot of people that come to like self-help or come to spiritual groups, they have already gone through a level of loss or trauma or they've already gone through some heavy shit and they're just trying to figure out, you know, they're already in a vulnerable position, a lot of them. And then they kind of put a lot of their own faith in someone else as the bridge keeper of knowledge. And this is fucked up, guys. Okay, so that's what I was getting back to before. It's like you have to really look within yourself and feel what feels right for you. And so you, when a red, what does red mean? Red means stop. If you see a red flag with a spiritual teacher, listen to it. Okay, it's telling you something. And so they appoint themselves as, you know, in the community, they appoint themselves as this level of authority where it's like they have to approve other people first and other people watch their videos and listen to their opinions on things before they can really kind of think about what their opinion might be on something. 
They've got to go and conform, consult with the other person, the, the, the leader or the teacher or the mentor. Um, and a lot of the, the content that they put out, it's not really educational. It's just venting or it's ranting or it's just absolute fucking self-indulgent nonsense. And it's, it's quite disturbing. I see it a lot. And in, in lots of different groups, I see it in workplaces as well. It's everywhere. You know, so it is what it is. And so the construct of like a pope or a priest is a construct that I feel in time. I know this is going to sound weird, but I sense in my higher self and my guides have kind of told me that in time, constructs like, um, you know, pope energy is fading. It's actually falling apart. It's act the pillars of the structure in the emperor, the emperor energy of it are actually collapsing because what's happening is data and technology and life and everything's moving so fast. These old paradigms and stories crumble and fall like the tower. They all, everything, remember, everything has to fall apart. Everything has to get updated and changed and what became new becomes old and what's old becomes new. And it's like the construct of priest, and I want to make this really clear, is I'm the middleman. You've got to come through me to get your knowledge. I'm closer to God than you. Wrong, 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 wrong. This is limited bullshit and it is controlling, okay? You don't need to go to someone else to connect you to a high frequency. The power of God, remember, if God existed, you are God. You're an extension of source. You're an extension of God. So if God existed, he is with, or he or God or whatever the universe is in you. You are an expression of energy. It's all an expression of energy manifesting ourselves and expressing it in a different way. You are God. You can connect to God just like anybody else can. Okay, so we must look inwards. We must look inwards. You can't go to someone else to tell uh, to get someone else to fix what's already within you because your higher self already knows what's wrong. Your higher self already knows what the fuck's going on here. Okay, we can go get perspective. We could go seek spiritual counselor. This card could be about counseling. It could be about going and seeing someone like me. Oh, and by the way, guys, at some point in the human evolution, I'm actually being shown as well, uh, right now, actually, it's coming in, is that science is only the measurement of something. Like, it's like the the metaphysical, or not the metaphysical, more of like biological stuff. So science is only the measurement of something. But at some point, at some point, science has to merge with spirituality. Yep, it does. It sure does. And I think this is something that we're going to be seeing in the next few years, like in the next 10, 20, 30 years, a lot of the, um, the tyrannical hold of these religion constructs are being completely debunked and they're falling apart. And so, but that, this card isn't all bad. Like, I don't want people to think, oh, I hate the Hierophant. I don't hate the Hierophant. I don't love the Hierophant. I, well, I do. I, I, it depends on, you know, the reading and, and what mood I'm in, what energy I'm, I'm working with or what, you know, what the fuck's going on. But for the most part, I mean, it's something that I get really quite weary of because I'm an artist. I'm a creator being. I really am not here. I didn't come here to follow the rules. I didn't come here to, you know, conform to people. You know, as an artist, it's a really difficult living in a materialistic world. I, yeah, I struggle a lot of the time. It's hard, you know, trying to survive and, and not being and being taken seriously by people because I don't have a conforming um, job description. I don't have and I think a lot of the, the, the rebel heart in me, I'm very much indigo energy. I'm, you know, the rebel. I'm here to destroy old ways of thinking like I came here to actually well, I, I'm fuck it. I came here to crush this shit. I didn't come here to expand upon what had already been done. I came here to destroy what had already been done so that we could create new ways. And in order for something to be overthrown, it needs to fall apart. And yeah, and so the tyrannical hold of religion around the world is definitely falling apart. People are waking the fuck up and going, this is actually really crazy. This is actually insane. This doesn't make any sense. It's really oppressive. It's very judgmental. It's very controlling stuff. And that's the thing, like a lot of when we, like, even when I look at this cross, you know, at the top of the card, I actually, it actually makes me feel a little bit nauseous. Like, I'm not actually joking. I've actually had a priest that tried to come for a reading with me once. Mm. And he got to the front door and my higher self was just like, my guides came straight in and they were like, this, 
this person is not coming into your house. And it felt so strong. I had to actually say to this gentleman, I'm sorry, but I just don't think today's the day. And I had to get, you know, get out of that situation because he was so spiritually filthy. I could already feel it. Okay. I could, I could already see it. You can see it. You guys, you can see it. You can feel it. Okay. Listen to that. This was, this was some fucked up stuff. And this is the thing about priest energy. They hate the witch. They kill the witch. They'll burn the witch, hang the witch, drown the witch, completely condemn her. But yet they're trying to, you know, they're the ones going out to the hut seeking knowledge. They're the ones going and, you know, seeing her for a reading. And then if they get to kill her, they own and possess her property. And then they have the control over, you know, over her paradigm because, you know, oh, you're, you're, you're not with us. Oh, you're, you're seeing things. Only God can see things. Oh, you know what? Gifts come in all different ways, shapes and forms. Fuck you. Fuck you for, you know, telling someone else what their gifts are or what their gifts are not. It's not for you to tell someone else what their gifts are. That's your ego speaking because you feel threatened by them. You know what? And oh, by the way, guys, I've had it also with levels of reading in the tarot or any type of mediumship. It doesn't matter where I want you to get over the level stuff. All right. It doesn't matter where it comes from. I was at a bus stop once and a young girl walked up to me and pulled on my T-shirt and gave me a message and walked off. And I was, all, I was like, whoa, whoa, what? How the fuck did she know that? Because she she channeled whatever it the data that had come through had come through her and it had come to give that message it had come down from wherever it came from so don't always get hung up in where information comes from or like you know is this person certified did they go and get the university degree no like life experience is a great way is a great place where we can gain a lot of knowledge about life and the concepts of things you know and we know, by the way, in university, I think it's like 78%, I think it's in the high 70s, of people that actually study at uni don't actually even end up getting a job in that field that they were studying in. Yeah, so it's like, it's weird. It's a bit weird like that. But anyway, that's a little bit about it. So yeah, don't, like, don't worry about where information comes from. It'll come when it needs to come. And by the way, on a law of attraction level, birds of a feather flock together. So, I mean, uh, I'll say it now. If you want to get better at something, um, whether it's like getting better at readings or getting better at playing tennis, you need to get in a vibrational match with the frequency in which you want to be right the fuck now. So I'm going to elaborate, I'll expand on that. So Say, for example, okay, this is the thing when people are all fighting for equality and they want equality and it's all about equality. I totally understand that. And I've been fighting for equality and I'm going to be fighting for it to the day that I die. But we're never, ever going to get equality. There will never, ever be equality in this world ever because it's conditional. It's based on different, different viewpoints. Some people view selling a 13 year old girl, which happens in this world as equality in their country. They see that as completely normal. Others would see that as absolutely diabolical and just absolutely a violation of all, like that's just filthy, that's disgusting. You know, so we're not, we're not equal. And the blueprint, the blueprint that you came in with into the human experience is what you brought in with you, DNA level, because you know what's DNA, it's a code. We also have a spiritual blueprint as well. So it's that whole nurture versus nature thing. Like it's the conditioning of things. And as I'm getting older, I'm actually going to say this. I'm going to go out on a limb and say it now. I don't think you can really, I don't think you can change someone's um, blueprint. I think the blueprint is kind of embedded in the soul of a being. It, it comes through them in a way that it's like, this is what their soul came to do. So a lot of souls, there are some dark souls out there. We know them. And there's some, you know, some lighter souls out there. We all have different souls of contrast or whatever, but you can't compel someone to act against their nature. And it, that's what it is. And it's like, if you like, I'm going to put this in a really simple way. If I planted like a pine tree, I planted a pine tree in a forest that's like native, native uh, trees in Australia, like gum trees. I planted a beautiful pine tree or a, a pine tree in a, in a plantation of gum trees. No matter what I do to that seed, that seed will still be a pine tree. It will still grow up to be a pine tree. So science in itself would say, would, you know, would say that, you know, if I was born in your DNA code, then I would be you exactly how you are now. 
so as oneness that kind of makes sense i kind of agree that to a certain point of view but then on the other the polarity of that is i completely reject that because that we have a soul your soul came in here to have a human experience and it already has data attached to it and that's part of me growing up as a medium and being spiritual was that I had a lot of information that was coming in for me. And I remember it like the age, I think it was around, I was 13, I stood in front of a mirror and I actually remembered looking at my body and actually remembering what my last body looked like. Yeah, freaky. Yeah, so the <laughs> yeah, weird that, you know, it happened. I stood in front of the mirror and I had an actual flashback wherever it was my Akashic record thing. I went back and actually, oh, and by the way, guys, just for the record, when we get onto the lover's card, which we will eventually, um, souls don't have genders, okay? The expression of the human form has a gender. And this is something that's interconnected to the structure of something that we always expect it to be the way it always was. Wrong. Humans are also changing and expanding as well. Yeah, so stick that in your pipe and smoke it. <laughs> oh gosh. Anyway, I'm having fun. Oh yeah, so this card as well, like being a bit of a nerd, I'm gonna make it a Star Wars reference. This card is kind of like the, you know in Star Wars, we have like the master and the apprentice. It is the rule of two. And so that's also seen with the Sith energy. It's like, you know, the apprentice will grow up and overthrow the master, but the apprentice couldn't attain a level of knowledge without the master. The master was there to guide. And that's kind of that, that replication is that all the information, knowledge that I've acquired in this life, I'm now passing on to my apprentice to be a stronger, better version of me. And that's with, like, you know, in the death card, we saw reincarnation or we saw, we saw having babies, not just as procreation, but we saw it as replication as well. And that's really interesting. So yeah, just a bit of a Star Wars reference there. Um, you know, this card in a reading in general, you know, it's obviously it's about, it could be someone connected to law. It could be an accountant. It could be anyone that you deem of authority over you that has something that you know, because we're not all equal back to the equality thing. Like if I have a stronger knowledge on how a car automobile works and I'm working at a car yard and you bring your car into me to get it fixed, I know how the car works. You don't. I have an advantage over you. All right. I'm in control. He who has the gold makes the rules, it's said with the emperor energy, but he who has the knowledge controls all. And so that's what the church does. It controls knowledge. It controls things for its own gain. Because religion, let's get real, it's a construct that is very much in a business. And of a lot of these religions, I look at them and go, what the fuck do they actually do? Like, what do they actually do to help the world? Like what the hell? And also ask yourself the question, when was the last time that you got involved in your community? When was the last time that you got active in your community and you went out and you don't have to donate money, you can donate time. You could like, you know, when, I just feel like, because this card is also about institution as well. So it could be like, there's different levels in that institution, whether it's donating, like as, as a charity, it could be you're donating clothes, it could be donating time to a soup kitchen. You know, if we all helped each other and looked at each other, our brother in our own communities, then the world would improve because we'd all be looking out for each other. But that's just my theory, you know, what the hell would I know, you know? But to me, that makes kind of, you know, it makes sense. So. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So back to the construct. Yeah. The church control the government, the government control the people. And in the Kabbalah reference to the Hukmah, it's actually the bringing down of knowledge into Heset, which Heset was about love, which was about sharing. So it is about sharing to some capacity. Um, but yeah, any type of st spiritual practice, you know, whether it could be anything to do with meditation, you know, so the construct of Hierophant energy in itself isn't just about control. That's the ego that comes in to control the other people. It could be also, you know, that you're just wanting to share information. Like right now in this video, I'm totally Hierophant energy. Like, fuck, I'm very much in the crone energy right now. I'm sharing my experiences. I acquired this level of knowledge. And so it's breaking down of knowledge. It's imparting knowledge and wisdom. Um, but I don't have a personal, there's no personal gain here for me. I just like sharing information because it's just like, you know, I know some stuff and I may as well just share it. So, and if we all share our information and we're not envious and jealous of people and we're just like, yeah, cool, we can take that on board and we all kind of grow. Also in the word culture, the first word in the word culture is what? Cult. So life in itself in the construct of the world and how it all formed is very much cults. It's cult energy in different countries and different practices and, and stuff like that. So I think we might even get onto the high priestess next, which is going to be a good one to do, which is the opposite, a kind of like, it is, 
it's the imparting of knowledge. Like she will share knowledge, she will. But the 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 hierophant is kind of like um, the key holder, which we see with all the keys here. Um, so it's like I have something that you want, but I'm the one who can unlock it. And uh, by the way, I had a lot of people, um, you know, message me. I had some Islamic people contacting me about this card. It was very offensive to some people. Um, guys, it's art. It's supposed to be. It's supposed to be evocative. It's supposed to be, you know, because I used different, um, you know, key denominations with the religious symbols at the top of the cards. Guys, don't take everything so literal, like calm down. It's not like I'm not attacking your religion. We're just inserting religious symbols. That's all it was. Okay. So it's not me trying to have a go at anything. I don't want to get this card. Like, obviously this card can be quite personal, but it is what it is. Um, <laughs> so I'm sorry if that upsets you, but yeah, it is what it is. Um, and being ignorant to things isn't going to change it. And stop seeing everything so defensively all the time. And that's one thing about this card that I will take out as a good thing. I don't think people spend enough time observing things. In nature, we see animals observing other animals. We see them like more passive. People need to just calm the fuck down and stop being so inflammatory. This card was not meant to be an inflammatory card. But I will explain, you know, a little bit of bureaucracy around it because it's real chat and that's what it's all about. <laughs> so, and by the way, I'm an alchemical artist. I take art, I take, you know, I take constructs that I download in symbols and signs and I interpret them and I put them into art, which is what art is. It's an expression. Okay. So, you know, it is, that's what it is. And that's the beauty of art. It can make you feel something and change your point of view or shift consciousness, which is what art is supposed to be doing. Yeah. So, Anyway, by the way, I hated school. I fucking hated it. It was like, it was a living hell for me. It was for a lot of beautiful mystics out there too. It was the opposite of, you know, I wasn't learning. I wasn't growing or expanding or evolving. And we looked at the devil card as well. Um, in the devil card, we saw that, you know, the construct of the student and the teacher is not a relationship based on equality because one sits higher than the other and one has something the other wants. So it's like, I have something that you want. And if you say what I said, then I'll pass you. And I, I don't really know and also by the way like have you guys ever like gone to a doctor and the doctor that one that you would assume would be like medically trained and the doctor's absolutely hopeless and the doctor's like googling symptoms in front of you i have had that just because they have this qualification on the wall means fuck all like they this person can't even do basic 101 stuff and so also on the subject of that as well guys if you're out there and you're getting into the tarot and i know it's a it's a wonderful thing getting into the self-help, little baby witches and shamans are all waking up and coming into the world, you got to learn 101. You got to learn the ABCs. A lot of these witches and beautiful mystics and God, they so love them. They're beautiful people and they're coming into this experience, but they're wanting to jump stages really quickly. Uh-uh, doesn't work that way. And it's really easy to, you know, say, I would say like, can you please like, tell me about, you know, tell me about the different stages of, the yearly wheel in, in the pagan, in the Wiccan. Tell me. And they'll be like, uh, 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 uh. All right, tell me about the five points on the star. What's the five points on the pentagram mean? And they'll, uh, 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 they don't know. So it's like, do your homework. Do, you know, take the time. Don't rush. Remember, we looked at the start of the video. Patience. This takes a long time. It's something that we acquire. It's like the, you know, those pillars that we see in the Hierophant card, in the traditional Hierophant. These are the things that we build up. These are things that take time. It's not something that we can just fast forward through. So if you're caught up in the sensationalism of stuff, forget it, okay? Stop doing that. It's not about the sensationalism. And that's why, to be honest with you guys, sip of the tea before I say this. I don't really give a fuck about tarot hashtags and talking about what your favorite pretty card is. I'm not here for the aesthetic. I'm not here. And that's the thing about doing tarot art and creating a tarot card deck. It's not about painting a pretty picture or drawing a pretty picture to appease someone. That is not what I'm doing. I am want, I want the real thing. Okay. That's what I'm here to do. That's what I want to do. I don't want to go over what's already been done. That is not me. And so it's like, as an artist, it's so hard surviving in the world. It's like, you know, all these systems that are in place. And it's like, I did everything I could to avoid the system. I did not want to feel like another brick in the wall. You know, that's just not me. So here I am. If you're out there and you're listening in the world and you're watching this video, thank you for supporting me because it does mean a lot. And it is what it is. 
But also I need to spend probably a bit more time with other artists as well and acquire more of a, a knowledge because we are who we hang with, remember? The vibrational match that we are around us is an, is an expression of us. So that being said with the Hierophant, it's like the mindset that we have. So if life is a series of events that just happen based on consequences that were based on actions, if we want to, if we're not, so if we're not happy with the consequence or the result of, a, of our behavior, we have to go back to our belief system. We have to go back into the mind because that is where the fuck it started. So you've got to tweak that shit. So, you know, constantly I'll see, I'll think I thought I knew something and then suddenly it's completely like, nope, it's actually this how I'm supposed to look. Oh, okay, I'm going in this direction. So be flexible, okay? That's how you grow and expand. That's how we learn stuff, be flexible. Also as well on the subject, I'm going to go there because you know I do. <sighs> a lot of spiritual people are not a vibrational match to wealth. They are not a vibrational match to being on a higher socio-economical structure because they're coming in to bring in spiritual knowledge, but in a lot of times they can't translate that into a sale into making capital because remember in capitalism we can't get richer without making someone poorer and also with the spiritual community if you're out there and you're watching this video now um and i'm gonna say this like <sighs> there's nothing wrong with money money's not the problem when people say money's the root of all evil no it's not people are the root of all evil Money was just a bartering tool that was created. Money is not the root of evil. Humans and their manipulation to oppress and hold others over, you know, in debt or whatever, that is evil. That's fucked up. It's not money. Money, like, guys, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater and, and just, uh, you know, think it's just about that because it's not. It's absolutely not. You're missing the point. That, that's actually deflection 101 right there. Oh, and by the way, guys, I don't put up with any lack of self-awareness. So if you don't know who you are, you don't know what you're communicating, Next, I've got no, no, no time for that shit. Fuck right off. Sorry. Figure out who you are. Know what you're communicating. And another thing as well, yeah, but back to the wealth thing as well. So I'm seeing a lot of, we remember we can't give what we don't have. So any information or any counsel or any data or any type of, you know, um, help that I give someone spiritually, I have to be asking myself the question first in myself, am I implementing this in my own life? Is the advice that I'm giving someone else matching my own advice in myself that I'm implementing and actually doing in an action phase? Because if it's not, stop it. I'm seeing people claiming to be life coaches and they live with their parents. What, is your parents, is your mum dying? Like, is she sick? Are you fucking kidding me? You can't give what you don't have. So if you're trying to, if you're telling other people how to build up and make millions of dollars and you're flat broke, that is fucking crazy. That is like going to a personal trainer that is clearly morbidly obese. They are not clearly living and encompassing the construct of what they are projecting. This is called being a hypocrite and I can't stand it. So... That is the thing, like any, this isn't like a part-time hobby, like being into tarot and esoterica is not a part-time thing like knitting or sewing or we go and catch up on the weekend and have a cocktail. This is my life. And so this is every day, this is implementation of this stuff. It is not an ascetic. It is, and that's what's happening with consumerism. It's becoming an ascetic. There is an ascetic to this and I know it's important and it's important to have an ascetic. I get that because, you know, this kind of, it helps the energy of it all, but it don't get caught up in that, guys. Don't get caught up in the cardstock of a tarot deck. Don't get like, who gives a fuck what cardstock? Tell me how this is going to teach you and make you grow and evolve and expand so that your readings can get better. I'd rather focus on the content of something than focus on the aesthetic of it. That's just my point of view. So yes, a lot of these spiritual people, they're not a vibrational match to wealth and they never ever will be. And I'll tell you right now, rich and poor mind constructs are two very different paradigms. They are almost polar. The rich don't hang out with the poor. The poor generally aren't a vibrational match to acquiring a level. I'm talking about self-acquired wealth. I'm not talking about wealth that was passed down from your parents or given from, you know, inheritance. I'm talking about acquiring a level of wealth. So I don't have any shame in this stuff. And by the way, if you're out there and you're charging money for readings, fucking charge money for those. And you should be charging more because it's your time. It's your energy. It's your, it's your nurture. It's your soul. It's your life experience that you're imparting. And so when we give free readings, and by the way, guys, I don't do free readings. Sorry, absolutely not. I did not acquire this level of knowledge to be giving it for free. 
That's when we put no, when we don't charge someone for a reading, we're not placing value in what we're doing. Money, like that's, that's what it is. So when we place value on a reading, that is the other person, it's a shake of hand of money is the other person acknowledges and sees what you're doing as valid. Unless it's a gifted reading, which I do gifted readings, all, you know, I do them all the time, but well, I'm more so used to. <clears throat> so yes, I just wanted you guys <clears throat> having a sip of tea to just kind of get your head around that for a second because it is the absolute goddamn truth, okay? So yeah, I just like to peek behind the matrix of things and sometimes we've got to check ourselves and check the spiritual community too and that's what it is. So I think what we're going to do now, I know if you've been waiting and you've made it this far through the videos, thank you so much. <laughs> I know it's taken a long time. I'm going to wrap this video up soon. I'm going to give you a breakdown of the artwork because that is what we came for. And I'm sorry I went off on these tangents, but I hope they've been helpful and insightful. And a lot of feedback is coming through and people are saying, I just love your realness. I love the videos. And I'm, thank you. I'm trying to be real. And that's what exactly what it's all about. Just being real, being authentic. This is who I am. This is what I'm communicating. All right, so the artwork explained. So with this artwork, this was a tough one for me. I tried a few different constructs and I didn't know what to do with it. I really kind of thought, fuck, like, what do I want to do? And uh, originally I knew that I wanted to do like vulture energy um, or, you know, like a, a, a bird energy in there because obviously it's it's higher. The bird energy is, it's a, it's a thing that's, you know, seeing down and looking down on things. It's of a higher um, status, I guess. Um, so we can see, obviously, we've got this gray sky going on and we've got this kind of, if you guys have noticed, there's actually a cross happening here in the light of the um, sky, which is actually, you know, it's a Catholic cross there. And we've got this kind of turban shape. So this is very, it is an abstract card. It is one of the most abstract cards in, in my deck that I decided to do. Uh, so it's almost like a turban energy, like a rabbi energy, but it's also the shape. I want you guys to kind of pay attention to the shape of it. It could be like, it feels like a Pope hat, but it's also quite organic as well. So it's got like an organic feel to it. And if I bring it up really close, I think it's getting it there. You can see there's all these little eyes there and the eyes are a reference to spies. You know, it's a reference to seeing, it's a reference to knowing. And a lot of these religious constructs, they have a lot of little eyes out there spying on people. Since I get this guy, since I published this deck just three months ago, three and a half months ago, I have been contacted by a church leader and I have been contacted by a satanic priest. So <laughs> like saying, I really like the way that you talk. Would you be like, whoa, holy shit. Yeah. I'm like, I didn't, you know, I'm not, that's not my thing so much, but I can see why they would contact me. But anyway. So because they must have seen the cards on my artwork or, you know, a lot of a, a lot of um, satanic worshippers saw the devil card. And this was actually, you know, correlation to the recent show Sabrina, where there was a lawsuit that happened from the Church of Satan against um, the show, which I think they actually won, which is really interesting. It was about the Baphomet statue. But anyway, um, so, yeah, back to the Hierophant. Um, we've got this vulture energy. And guys, what does a vulture do? Vultures pray. They pray on the weak. They pray on the young. They pray on things. They don't, they're not like an active predator. They're scavengers, okay? They scavenge off other things to survive. Looking around, searching, a little animal looks sick. Little, you know, it's, it's that embedding its consciousness into something weaker than itself to continue its own energy. We've got human teeth here. And this card is also a reference to my favorite, uh, one of my favorite films. It's actually a film called The Cell, which came out in 2000. It stars Jennifer Lopez and Vincent O'Frid. And it's actually a really, really, really talented um, director out there. His name is Tarzan Sim. He's an Indian director. And his styling for that art, for the, the artwork and the theme and feel of that particular movie was so incredibly beautiful so baroque so dark fuck it was dark so gothic and it really had a lot of tarot constructs in it if you go back and watch the the opening scene of that movie where jennifer lopez is riding it on a white horse fuck that so chariot guys it's that movement energy and there was, and, and also the um, the demon king in that in it was on a throne, and this is kind of a tribute. I don't know. Some people never noticed it, and some people did. Some people didn't. But you'll see here these two hooks here. It's like he's got his hooks attached to other things. So it's like this this being that's walking through a cracked desert bohemian floor. There's no water here. It's all dried up, 
and it's like the vulture energy in the bird. And then we've got these kind of these, um, it's like uh, silk, it's attached, and it's like they're someone or somewhere on the other side here, either side. It's like a reference to the original, you know, it's a, a reference to this. So it's like they're following, you know, following the leader, following him into something. He's going out into this vast open space, which could be space, the universe, and it's like they are following. We've also got another thing a lot of people didn't like or some loved, which was human teeth hanging. So what's that? I don't want you to speak your truth. I don't want you to, you know, you've got to see things through my eyes and it's like ripped out your, ripped out your mouth, ripped out your teeth. And I kept those as um, trophies. It's like in the chain. So that was a reference to that. Anyway, <laughs> so it's kind of like, you know, this organic feel, it's a gatekeeper, you know, it is absolutely about, you know, knowing, seeing, feeling, um, it could be about privilege, status, overindulgence, which is what the silk energy was, which is about, you know, silk is generally a silk that's like, you know, it acquires a level of wealth to have silk. Um, and that's why the purple feel here as well. It's purple isn't a reference to royalty or a mystical kind of energy color, which is what I wanted to do, um, you know, with the layout today. Ah, so yeah, he's the sacred carrier of knowledge. He's a bridge between things. And that's definitely what this is all about. So whether it's coming up in a reading in a good way or a bad way, you know, really it is about truth. And so don't be simple minded, you know, think about what feels right for you. You know what's right and wrong. Uh, it could be a mentor, teacher. We've already talked about that. So I think we've covered it from a lot of angles here. Um, but yeah, in reverse, I mean, it could be rebellion. So it's the opposite of the Hierophant. It's breaking tradition. It could be like divergence. It could be being silly and letting your hair down. Stop being so fucking structured all the time and just go out, have fun, you know, drink, let be crazy. It's choosing not to follow the system, um, which is what we looked at with me and my energy is, a, you know, what I do. I hate following systems. I fucking hate that shit. I hate conforming. I hate being told what to do. I have my own opinions. Um, and guys, do you really, really need someone else to tell you what you like? Do you really need to get someone else's opinion of something first because you place them of higher value than your own intuition? No, you know what feels right or wrong within you, okay? Stop looking through life through the minds of others, yeah? Because most of the time, it's just gonna, they're just gaining energy over you. And also, don't hide your truth. Like, live your truth, be authentic, yeah? And it's time for things to change. We can't, you know, we can't always do the same fucking thing, which is the Gemini energy which is coming through as well, which is like, we have to have change. We can't do the same thing. Things need to be broken up. And it's like, you know, letting go of things that no longer serve you. It could be old beliefs. It could be habits. You know, it could be, you know, and this could also indicate a really disgraced spiritual teacher being caught out. A lot of that happens in politicians or, you know, spiritual teachers, pedophiles in the, in the church. That's definitely, definitely hierophant energy there. Um, yeah, so it's about, it could be immoral behavior, which is obviously the shadow side. We looked at that. It's the ego. Like, I need you to see things how I see them. You need to live through my my rules. I'm enforcing my rules upon you. So, you you know, you'll get punished if you don't. Uh, we looked at that. So, yeah, I'm just thinking, what else could I possibly cover with this card? I think we've kind of gone over it quite a bit. And um, I just hope that you got a lot out of it. So, yeah. Look at your own intuition if this comes up in a reading. We don't need, you know, we don't need to hold things over other people's heads. We, you know, that's what, that's the middleman thing. That's what the fucking devil's for, really, isn't it? You know, uh, a lot of people, you know, really don't respond well to the imagery of the Hierophant card. Um, there was a lot of controversy. I'm going to mention this as well. I'm not going to dwell on it too much because I'm going to wrap this up in a sec. But, you know, the Doreen Virtue thing. So we had this person that was kind of very trusted, was like the, the mother energy, the empress energy of the tarot community or the tarot world and she created a lot of beautiful esoterica she did yep i bought some i did i was there and then later on she out of nowhere she just went nah i'm going back to god i'm going back to church i disinvow everything and it was just like whoa like and and then for a while there i believe from what i've been told she was capitalizing on the constructs of things that she'd built in her old life that she had now dis you know disconnected with and it was like, whoa, what is going on here? So we've got that caught out energy there. And that could kind of be in the shadow element of the Hierophant. So a lot of people got really upset and they took that to heart and they felt very betrayed. But at the end of the day, guys, everyone's entitled to believe whatever they want. It is their right. Sovereignty is the free will of all people. 
and it is the free will of life. When we're not here, to, we shouldn't be here to oppress and control people and manipulate them for our own gains and our own agenda. We, you know, we're trying to just that's the thing. Like, you know, just share what you know and and put it out in the world into a positive way. This card isn't all negative. It is, you know, there is beauty in teaching. There's beauty in learning. And we all like to learn. We all like to grow. And that's, you know, your stories matched with my stories. I love hearing stories. And those stories, I integrate them into me and I learn things from them. And then we kind of have, you know, the key. <laughs> we can unlock our own potential. We can unlock our own information. So, you know, a lot of information is kind of stored in places and we have access to it. It's called the fucking internet. You can Google that shit now. You can find information out there in the world, anything you want. You can go online and figure it out. And at the moment, what's happening as well on my high guides told me this a couple of weeks ago and I wrote it down on a bit of scrap paper in my bedroom was that um, information is now or technology and information and data is moving faster than consciousness. And it's like, fuck, like, you know, we're just so over and saturated with all this information coming through on our phones, on our, in all this data on social media. It's all just, it's kind of like, you know, for me as an artist, when I'm creating, I need to shut down. I need to go into hermit mode because I need to go in and, you know, I need that time alone to just be on my own and just, you know, really, really process how I feel about stuff. And that's how I do my work. This, by the way, is way out of my comfort zone doing these videos, which is why I'm not showing my face. I just like to just talk about the art because it's not about me. It's about the art. It's about my, you know, it's about the information. So I'm pulling away from that element of this. But I hope that this helped. Student teacher relationship dynamic. Um, you know, I, I'm just going to leave it here, I think, for today. Uh, he's been such, uh, I've had a really good time. I've really enjoyed chatting. I wish you guys all the best in your spiritual practice. Um, thank you for supporting me and supporting, you know, this deck. If I, you know, if obviously if I don't make these videos and people don't know about it, people don't really, you know, they don't get to see um, my work because it is self-published and I have to kind of, you know, step out of my comfort zone, which was a big thing for 2019 that I had to kind of get out of my comfort zone and I had to just, you know, tell people about what I do. So um, you can pick up a copy of the Algoliath Tarot Deck at www.thealgoliathtarotdeck.com and you can get the deck there. It, we ship worldwide. It is also on Amazon, but it has sold out quite a bit. Um, and it is available. So we have many copies available if you'd like. Um, so there's a little bit of a plug to the deck. If you want to pick up a copy and you want to follow along to my channel, we're going to go through all the cards, starting with, you know, the ones that we've already covered. And we're going to kind of go one by one. If you'd like to um, send a question in to me, you can. You just have to send it through via Instagram, which is just find me on Insta, which is Al Goliath Tarot Deck, really easy. Or you can send a question into info at the algoliath tarot deck.com and um i do have uh, a friend of mine is looking over that so he'll be able to work out which questions are really going to be most helpful for the channel because it is about learning it's not about anything else i just want to share what i know um and yeah so we'll kind of cover that question i'm saving up the questions uh for a question video which i'm going to be doing a bit later on and i know these videos are a bit long but guys like there's just so much for me to say i could literally sit here all day and talk about the hierophant card or any card in the tarot because i love it so that being said uh, i wish you guys a wonderful week and thank you so much for for tuning in um please uh follow uh if you'd like to subscribe smash the subscribe button if you'd like to you know like me uh you can find me out there in social media world i'm out there and i am contactable i i do try and get to everybody and i wish you guys a wonderful wonderful week and i will see you in the next video thank you so much bye